Welcome to Vintage Weights PGH. My name is Rob, and this is a Billard Olympic deep dish weight plate. In this video, I'll go through a short history of Billard Barbell, followed by some of the design qualities and features of this particular deep dish set. Then I'll get into the quality of it, meaning how good are they? So what's the weight tolerance? What do they look like on a barbell? And lastly, I'll get into the valuation and a bit of a review. So starting out with a brief history, you may have seen my Billard Standard 1-inch Plate Identification Guide video. If not, I'll drop a link in the description. And by the way, please like, subscribe, comment, do all that happy stuff. It's a great way to support the channel. But back on track. If you saw that, then you saw a bit of a history of Billard Barbell. I talked about how 1959 Mr. Universe, Bruce Randall, was the spokesman for Billard Barbell. I also talked about how Billard Barbell was pretty prominent in the 1960s. What I'll mention here that's a little different is that something I really respect about Billard Barbell, Barbell, is that they didn't just copy the big guys of the era. They didn't copy York Barbell, even though they were in the same state. They were in Pennsylvania. They produced their plates in Reading, Pennsylvania. Billard did their own thing. They had a classic three-spoke design for their deep dish. However, initially their advertisements with their golden plates were a cross hub design without any lettering and just numbering. But I've yet to see any of these surface in real life. So I really don't know whether they ever produced them or not. There are some different hypotheses as to that. In terms of this plate though, it is for sure something that you can find. They're fairly easy to find on the used market, Billard Olympics, but you gotta be careful that you don't actually buy one that was made overseas. How to tell the difference? Well, Billard Olympic mostly were made in the United States. Billard Universal were made overseas. Universal was the switch they made after the IOC cracked down on the use of the word Olympic. You can hear the history of that in episode two of Home Gym History Podcast. I'll drop a link for that in the description as well. Now, as far as uh, an oddity, this is a Billard Olympic plate, but it was not made in the United States. I'll get into more details in terms of the difference between these two plates a little later in the video. But for now, it really helps that deep dish plates can balance on their own, by the way. Some basic features of the Billard Olympic made in the United States deep dish set would be, as I mentioned, the three spoke design. It has fairly sharp, narrow lettering with the numbering that comes in pounds and kilograms, which leads me to believe that these are 1970s more so than the 60s, even though the Billard Barbell Company was around in the 1960s. The rims, much like I mentioned in my international deep dish video recently, are machined in different points, I assume, to knock off overflow or casting flaws. They are a bit bumpy in comparison with some of my other deep dish. On the back, my 45s are lathed, and I should mention that all the way down to the 2.5s can be lathed, even though my 10s and my 25s aren't lathed. Lathing was the same purpose as milling, if you think of milled Yorks. It was to bring them into tolerance. It wasn't an aesthetic type of thing. So I assume that my 10s and my 25s are within weight tolerance. We'll soon find out when I put them on the scale. Something you might notice about the smaller change plates is that they, instead of just having a hub, also have the spokes. Look at this teensy tiny 2.5 with spokes and lettering. They're fully lettered and they have spokes all the way down to 2.5s. That's not the case with other manufacturers of deep dish weight plates. Sometimes to save money, manufacturers will stop putting spokes after 25 pounds and on the change plates, there won't be any spokes. 
Some manufacturers won't even have any lettering. They'll just be numbering. Once again, kind of like the International Canada Plates. If you're wondering what those International Canada Plates are and you didn't see my recent video, then check that out. And never miss a video, make sure you subscribe. Now let's get these onto the barbell and we can see what kind of play they have on the bar as well as a little bit of differences in terms of diameter and thickness with the made in USA versus the made overseas. All right, we've got our Billard Olympics on a Rogue Ohio Power Bar with a milled York plate to show the diameter difference that there's about a quarter of an inch difference with the Billards versus a standard weight plate. Something to keep in mind if you're pairing them with standard plates. In terms of thickness, a standard plate is about 1.2 inches, whereas the Billards are very similar to the International that I mentioned. They're around 1.7 inches. So on the narrower side of deep dish, but still deep dish. So for play on the bar, these have a little bit. You can see that there's about, I'd say an eighth of an inch of space between the sleeve and the plate. Nothing egregious, but not exactly what I would call snug. Now let's look at the difference between the made in the United States and the made overseas. The first big difference would be in the diameter. The diameter is much smaller with the made overseas. It's actually smaller than a regular weight plate, than a York milled. You'll see that there's almost half an inch difference once you have it on the bar. Now, because of play on the bar, some of that spreads out a bit if you were to stack them perfectly on top of each other. The other thing to keep in mind would be that the thickness of them is a little bit different. It's not as prominent as the difference in diameter. So 1.7 and change versus just under 1.7, 1.686. So slightly thinner when made overseas. Now let's look at the weight tolerance. 2.65, 2.65, at least they're the same. Look at that, 10 pounds on the money. .4, and 45.05. Other than the color, because these have both been repainted, there are some design differences between the Made in the United States Billard Olympic and the Made Overseas Billard Olympic. Taiwan is stamped in the spoke, so you know for sure that it's made overseas, but here are the design differences. The one that sticks out to me right away would be the spokes. The spokes on the Made in the United States are only about 6 tenths of an inch, whereas they are much thicker spokes, almost 9 tenths of an inch on the Made Overseas. The opposite is true of the rims. Take a look at these next to each other. So the Made in the United States rim is thicker. It's about seven tenths of an inch, whereas made overseas is only about half an inch. Another difference would be the termination point of the spokes. Over here on the made United States, the spokes terminate at about half an inch from the rim, whereas here they go all the way to the rim. The lettering at first glance looks like it might be identical, but there are some key differences. It's much wider on the made overseas. Look at the A here versus the A on the made in the United States. So the O over here is narrower 
kind of like a skinny script O, and the O for the made overseas is circular, kind of like an unbranded Ivanka O. The numbers are a bit wider as well. You'll see that the five here stops, whereas the five here kind of curls up some. So just little differences from one to the next. I don't think I'd personally mind the lettering differences. I kind of like the misspelled Olympic, but I really like the narrower spokes and the thicker rim. We've seen the design. We've seen the differences of weight tolerance that are pretty good. We've seen a little bit of play on the bar, and now it's time to talk about value. Value is an opinion when it comes to collectibles, and these weights are more than just weights. They are collectible at this point. So please know that this is just my opinion here in spring of 2023. Maybe it'll change in the future, but for now, here's what I think. I think that these are generally undervalued at this point. I usually see people selling Billard Olympic Made in USA plates for $1.50 to $2 a pound. I think they're worth more than that, and this is why. I think these are undervalued because other plates that are generally around the same price, around $2 a pound, are made overseas. These are made in the United States. Other plates that might be around $2 a pound, $1.50 to $2 a pound, are not lathed for accuracy. Billards are, at least the ones that were made in the United States. So we've got a made in the United States plate that's lathed for accuracy. Why is it not worth more than $2 a pound? The only thing I can think is that a lot of people are really bothered by the kilogram being on it, and that sometimes people get a little snobby when it comes to collectibles and vintage weights are no different. Since these aren't too hard to find, there's an element of supply and demand, and things that are harder to find would be of higher demand, even if they aren't made in the United States, or even if they aren't lathes for accuracy. But that's why I say, if you're looking for made in the United States deep dish, you can get these at a pretty affordable cost right now, until people start watching this video and charging more. So go now! <laughs> Buy now! But for now, please know that these are undervalued in my opinion. Billard is a classic deep dish made in the United States weight plate that deserves respect and deserves a spot in a lot of gyms. Thanks for watching everybody. I really appreciate your support. I've gotten a lot of really nice comments and really nice emails recently. Some people have reached out to me on Instagram as well. If you don't follow me on Instagram, check that out. It's the same name as on here, Vintage Weights PGH. I'm looking forward to more weight plate reviews. So please, if you're looking forward to more weight plate reviews, vintage weight plate reviews, then hit that subscribe button. I am able to do this because of your support. So if you want to support me even more, then please buy your supplies through the links that are in my description. Anything you shop for on Amazon, if you just go through my Amazon link, will just toss me a couple pennies. And that goes towards things like my website. So please know that I put that money right back into what I'm doing here because I love this stuff and I love vintage weights. And you know why? Because old weights, new gains.